Who is first? You first. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Alejandra Sosnavas. I'm from Ecuador. I got a diploma in Ecuador. I am Oceanic and Environmental Science Engineer. I have been living in the United States almost three years. And this is a new life for me in the United States. You know, I am speaker Spanish. So improve my English is my one of my first goals. So I am ESL student because I want to learn English because I would like to do a master degree or something like that. And you know, is a little bit about my myself. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Pablo Sosnavas. Uh, I'm from Ecuador too. I am the older brother. Uh, okay, for me, oh, when I came to this country it was really, really hard because I remember exactly my first meeting with Lisa Curry. <coughs> I know understand anything Denise and Alejandra help me translate, say no Pablo, she say something. But now I feel wonderful because now I have the LFCC give me opportunity to learn my second language. So I can believe that right now I can have this, this opportunity to have this, this meeting with, with, with you. So I feel fantastic because in the beginning it was really hard because before to come in, I, I am engineer in telecommunication in my country, but when I came here, oh my God, it's like it's like a baby because I can't do anything. I can't speak with anybody because a lot of people around me speak English very well. My family, my step, my stepfather, my stepbrother was really, really complicated. But now uh, I feel well, I feel well because I have a, a everybody, everybody tell me that my English is good. <laughs> But when somebody speaks really fast, it's, it's really complicated to me because I understand that because I have good time. I have two years in this country, I think so it's okay. It's good. I feel well with myself because I have the opportunity to have an easy conversation with Americans, with my co-worker, with my friend, with my, with my two sisters because they are, they are my support. Every time they are my support. Now I'm taking Guata class with, with my sister Alejandra. We are working together when I'm not understand something. No, okay, brother, this is something like this. I feel well. This is the reason with my friends in Ecuador, all the time I explain what means ESL. Because when I came here, I didn't know anything idea about what means ESL. But ESL gave me the opportunity to learn different culture, different food, different uh, uh, education, excellent friends, wonderful professors. Uh, like uh, Dr. Santana is right now, uh, Lisa. Vicky. Lisa. I don't have the opportunity to Lisa to <laughs> my, my professor, but oh, this is this is the one of the the reason I love it LFCC because I can't believe that I can explain something like that about my life with you. But this is all. So, um, hi, I'm Denise Navas. I'm the youngest of the three ones. Um, I took the ESL classes. I already finished. Uh, that doesn't mean that my English is perfect. I'm learning each day. So um, today we will present Ecuador. So I hope that you like our presentation. Please feel free to ask questions if you want. Also, I want to say thank you to all my friends that are here. I let them know two hours ago, so they made some crazy for that. So thank you so much for this. And yeah, I miss the Global Awareness too. I miss the food. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, in this Global Awareness 2021, we will show you about ECWA. My name is Alejandra Sosnavas, and with my team, Les Carlo and Denise Sosnavas, we will show more about it. I will start to say welcome to ECWA with us. Uh, in this presentation that we can show 
you uh, a little more about Ecuador. So I will start with the location. Ecuador is located in South America. You can see in that picture, Ecuador is one of the smallest country in that region. I mean, South America region. But if you see the next uh, picture, you can see that Ecuador borders Colombia to the north, Peru in the southeast, and Galapagos Island in Pacific, in Pacific Ocean to the west. Ecuador is made up uh, of 24 provinces, and you can see that difference in these different provinces in all of these. Equator or Ecuadorian line is crossed in the Ecuador and divide in two hemispheres. You can see here in this in this point, if Ecuador is so small, maybe you can see very well. But this is the two hemispheres: North Hemisphere and South and South Hemisphere. In Ecuador, the there is a city. Uh, its name is Ciudad del Mundo or the middle of the world city. And here it stay the latitude zero degree, zero minutes, zero seconds. <laughs> <Never knew that. laughs> About the official and ancestral language, Ecuador has one official language and this is Spanish. That's why all, all Ecuadorian population are Spanish speakers. However, we have 13 ancestral languages. They it are Hawapi, Pepera, Tapiki, Chapalachi, Copan, Suar, Suar, Quichua, Quechua, Iona, Secoya, Zaparo, and Wow. Can I ask a question? These languages, are they indigenous languages, meaning the languages of the people who were there before the Spaniards, or are they languages that have come from other places? Are these well, big, this is a big question. I don't I don't pretty sure about that, but I think that all these understand languages is before these uh, are Inca languages. Sorry, these are the languages of the Incas and the native people. Mm -hmm. Yes, and do they have a written alphabet or are they only a verbal language? Okay, it's just verbal, some is dialects. So, <clears throat> we have to remember that the indigenous they don't. They, they don't know how to write. They exactly. So these languages are more of the Amazons, uh, you know, on the forest. Uh -huh. And actually I want to emphasize that some of these languages almost are, uh, are done because uh, no, everybody knows. So, yeah. <laughs> Good, mm -hmm. and, and that is very true. Some of these are languages that are fading away because they're they're held by such a small group of people. Good exactly. Can I, can I add something? I think Quechua is the most popular one. And like many people in the mountains of Ecuador speaks Quechua and they have the same alphabet. They don't have like they write with the same letters, but just the language is different. Okay. And that's the Quechua? Yeah, it's mainly in the mountains region and some of the other ones are from people from the jungle region. Mm -hmm. They are so, very small populations, and they like between the like they are neighbors. Yeah, cities that are neighbors, they speak different languages. Like, for example, Shuar is mainly spoken in the jungle, but Quechua is m most popular in the mountains region of Ecuador. Okay, good. The communities of the indigenous communities of uh, different ancestral dialects are small to, uh, 
such as he trying Quechua, for example, and they want to teach him or they want teaching different people in order because they don't to lose their language. But another indigenous group, they are isolation with the rest of the community, the Ecuadorian community. That's why they don't teach anything. About the regions, Ecuador has four different and amazing regions. One of them is the yellow. Uh, this is the coast or Costa Ecuatoriana. And here we have the, the most silent point of the Pacific Ocean. It's located in Santa Elena and the name is La Chocolate. We have the another region is La Sierra or the, and, the Andes region. And here is famous because uh, La Sierra or oh, the Los Andes mountains or oh, the system mountains is close to Ecuador in all extensions. Another one is the Amazonia or Amazon region. And, and this one is the most largest and least population of the, of the Ecuador region. The last one is Galapagos Island or Archipelago de Galapagos, and this is a group of islands. About general curiosity, Ecuador is one of the countries with the highest number of volcanoes in around the world, of which um, we have 80, 98 volcanoes around, around the Ecuadorian extension. However, three ones are potentially active. One of them is in the Sierra regions and another one in the Galapagos. And also, Ecuador is known as the capital of Brazil. We have 4,250 and 1,301 are endemic Brazil from Ecuador. Ecuador has uh, 51 protected areas and 11 national parks. And we will show you more about these curiosities in specific regions. Okay, I have another question. Another thing, curious. There's 98 volcanoes. Yes. Are they all located in the same region? So if you go back to your map, well, are they 98 in all Ecuador? Okay, but are they all located in the purple region of your map or are they located no, all no. over Ecuador? No. Some of them, the most of them is in the Sierra regions, but another one is in the Galapagos Island. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know me, I like volcanoes. And we will show you more about these curiosities in specific regions. Another thing, curiosity thing, is about the Panama Canal. Maybe have you have heard before about that, but the Panama Canal is from Ecuador. Um, but they took that name because it was worked by Panama Canal workers. You can see that picture. So Ecuador, at the beginning, Ecuador explored this um this hat for for this work yeah? and then Ecuador export and sold to the Panama tools. About exportation too, Ecuador is the is the country number one exporting um, bananas in the world. That's why the bananas is the key ingredient in the Ecuadorian food. About another exportation, we have the flora and cacao and fruit. So if you are interested to go to Ecuador, you can, you don't need a visa to enter to Ecuador. So you can stay in Ecuador until 90 days for, e for year, per year. So 
I want to share with you about this beautiful slogan is all you need is equal. So with the slogan, the, Equ the Ecuadorian government tried to invite the tourists from another places around the world to go equal. So I will show you more about the different regions and I hope that you can go to Ecuador in the future. The coast in Ecuador has beautiful beach, rivers, museums, and national parks for tourists. All these places are free. Do you need paid anything? Uh, the climb, the climb is really nice because the weather is tropical. On temperature on the coast is 22 degrees Celsius. Next. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people in the world prefer go to the to the beach to surf, but in Ecuador, in the coast especially, have three important uh, beach: Montpiche, Canoa, and Montañita. However, many tourists go to Ecuador not only to surf but also to learn about traditions, culture, typical food, and enjoy. Next. In the coast, we can see in this picture different different activities, uh, rafting, canyoning, pointing, dog, dog, downhill, and canopy. This is the most common activities in the coast. Next, Ecuador has diverse cities of food, but one of the most popular food is the red crab. The red crab is especially in, in, Guayaquil, in Guayaquil. We can see in the picture the crab, the red crab with rice, with meat crab. This is, this is really delicious. And next to the crab, we can see the sal, salad. Next. Okay, this is a little same, the crab meat. This is the paint. What do you prefer? Do you, do you don't like? to Diri, so it's more easy to eat for you. A lot of people prefer crab meat. Hey, we can see in the corner, uh, something like plantain, plantain. Next. Tonga, Tonga is another traditional food in the coast. Look great, next. And so when you Wait, wait, go back. What is this? What is it made of? Yeah, this okay, is a tonga. Uh, oh, okay, Pablo, go ahead. Yeah, this is a tonga. This is another traditional food in the coast, especially in Guayaquil. Yeah, this is, you can see this a meal, rice, a plantain, bocado, the salt that is a mix the onion and tomatoes. Tomato, and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really delicious. This is. You can see in the picture, it's not normal because uh, when when one tourist go to Ecuador, try to impression, for example, the, the best picture to to probably to imagine that the tourists come back again because this is really different to another country. What we kind have... of meat is this? Oh, this is chicken. So this is chicken. Yeah, yeah it's that. chicken. Then, and then this it, is plantain on the right hand side. Actually, yeah, is it green? And yucca too. What and is it? And green plantain leaf? Yeah, we can see we can see in the cornet is a yucca next to the plantain. Is I can see. Can I wait? I was gonna see if I could write on this. Here we have an Ecuadorian chef. Ah, yeah. Eric yeah. is here. Eric Arriaga, actually, that picture is from here. Yeah. He okay. prepared that Ecuadorian Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we would talk about food. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Very traditional. 
And fall in the cost. Look great. Next. Encebollado. Encebollado is my favorite food because you can eat in the morning, in the evening, in the in the afternoon, when do you want to prefer? A, a lot of people eat this this food after the party uh, because they say that uh, when they are drink, drunk, uh, because they are drinking uh, too much wine or beer or vodka or something like that. After that, when they are eating this food, they say that recovering. That's right, probably they can continue again to drinking something like that or, <laughs> or take a nap. Next. What is, wait, what is that? The breakfast. I'm gonna ask all these questions. What is this? Okay, is this is encebollado. And encebollado you can eat in different ways. Um, we can eat with, uh, with corn, we can eat with rice or green plantains, lemon. So actually here the picture you can see the encebollado is the in the middle and the and the things that you can use are around them. Okay, so it is like a soup. It has yeah, it's kind of soup, the fish soup. It's fish? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fish. And it also has yuca. It's, it's yeah. mashed yuca. Oh. Okay. <laughs> It's delicious. You have to try it. Okay. You will be in love. No. <laughs> really? I can't imagine drinking and then eating fish. <laughs> oh my God. No, no, no. It's, I mean, I don't like so much the fish and soup, but this soup doesn't feel like soup. I don't know how to explain, but it's delicious. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it also has a lot of onion. That's why it's called encebollado because cebolla is onion. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Take a nap. Next. The breakfast. The, the breakfast common in in the coast is el bolo. Uh, the ingredients are plantain, chicharron, and cheese. Uh, probably with a coffee or or water or or juice. Next. The Sierra, Sierra is is a the second region. Uh, it's nominated the Andes Mountain, also the best place in the world. We can see in the in the first picture, it's a perfect view. And the second one, we can have more idea how it's exact place. Uh, we can see that uh, in the border of the of the city, the big mountain is. It is really, really nice. The temperature is at 12 uh, degrees Celsius to 18 degrees Celsius. It's really cold. Next. The tourists, the, this is the different, different activities in, in the Sierra. It's not similar to only the first one because it's a skydiving. But the the second one, the, the second picture we can see is like uh, mountain biking. And the last one is a horseback riding through the Andes. This is a, a lot of common because the Sierra have a many mountains. Next. Hey, Chimborazo. Chimborazo is the, is the, high, is the higher mountain in Ecuador. Is only the 39 hiker peak in the Andes. We can see in the second picture, everybody know that the mountain Everest is the most is the most high in the world. But Chimborazo is the more high measure in the center of the air. That's right. In the in the second picture, we can see the difference that probably say that Chimborazo is more bigger, but it's only when you are measured in the center of the earth. Next. Cotopaxi Volcano. Uh, this volcano is, is the really popular in, in the Sierra. With its preferred snow, 
Cobb Con, Cotopaxi is the most famous volcano for mountaineering in Ecuador. At 5897 Merit is the second higher mountain in Ecuador, in, in the country, Ecuador. It's located in the Cotopaxi National Park. This park is free, so you don't need to pay anything to enter. Next. So is that a dead volcano? Is that a dead volcano or does it still erupt? Can you repeat your question? Is it a dead volcano or does it still erupt? No, it is dead. No. It is. When was the last time that it erupted? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an idea. So it's been a long, long time. I will be the answer when you finish the video, okay? I will. <laughs> I will. Yeah, okay. How about it? Right, there you go. <laughs> I, I don't remember when was the last time, to be honest. Okay. Sierra is really different to, to the coast because in the coast, uh, the popular ingredient is the rice. In, in the Sierra is mote. Uh, this place, the name is Yapingacho. We can see a uh, pork, uh, corn, kernels, and fried potatoes, and tortillas, and a salt, means onion and potato, or something like that. Next. Okay, this is this is another presentation the how you can see in different cities in the Sierra. This is a it's a same play to the before slides. Thank you. The Amazon or El Oriente is the country largest region. Nothing is just ordinary in the Ecuadorian Amazon. Ecuador, Amazonian jungle, one of the country most thrilling destinations. This area has the highest biodiversity in Ecuador, with more than 800 species of birds, more than 2,500 types of insects, and more than 450 species of endemic flora. Next. Oh, here are food that we can see in the Amazon. Next. Can so you tell here us is kind of Tonga, but can you tell us what the food is? Go back. So I want to emphasize that I have been in Amazon just twice in all my life. So <clears throat> just I search about the food because I never tried the food over there. But the food that I tried was the second picture that is kind of Tonga. If you can see, we can see the green leaf. That's the green plantain leaf and the fish and the rice and salad. <clears throat> this one? No, uh, the second one. The next picture. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. In the Amazon, next. So here is kind of Tonga, but the difference is that we can see fish, rice, salads. And I think that it's important to add that in Ecuador, it's really usual that we use the green plantain leaf, like kind of for plate. So, and also there we can see um, the green plantain and the yellow plantain. Next. Okay, the Yasuni National Park. This is one of the most important and largest parts of the Ecuador. He is the only region where all the indigenous dialects are spoken. Next. To protect these tribes and the biodiversity of the Yasuni, the Tagereni Taromane Intangible Zone was created in 1999. The Yasuni National Park was declared a biosphere reserved by UNESCO in 1989. In Yasuni, surprising biodiversity figures have been reported for various groups of flora and fauna never before recorded in any protected area. Next. Uh, next. Uh, here we can see uh, some animals like the jaguar, 
next. Uh, monkeys or monos in Spanish. Another type of monos. Frogs or ranas in Spanish. And some curiosities. Uh, the first curiosity that I have is the Ecuador Southern Oriente is less developed than in Northern counterpart in everywhere with fewer roads, fewer towns, fewer tourists, and less oil activity. If you want to go to the earth of the tropical rainforest, possible only by boats and aircraft. Another curiosity is that Ecuador was colonized by the Spanish, but the east was almost impossible for the Spanish to arrive through the great green hill. But what is green hill? Green hill, are the name that they put for the poisonous snake and animals that made the Spanish forced to leave the intention to stay in this area. And the last one is the Ecuador bird washing is legendary. In the entire country of Ecuador, there are an estimated of 1,600 species of birds, more than double the number of all the North America. Many of these birds are found in the Amazon region, including some of the more spectacular ones, like the tokens, macros, and tanagers. Next. So here we can see the colibris in Spanish. Next. Tucanes. Next. And Galapagos Island. The Galapagos Island are famous for the diverse plant and animal life from both on land and the surrounding seas. And with more than 400 species of fish, some of the most unique birds on the planet. Next. Situated in the Pacific Ocean, some 1,000 kilometers from the Ecuador, the continent of Ecuador, these 19 islands and the surrounding marine reserve have been called a unique living museum of the showcase of evolution. Located on the confluence of the three ocean currents, the Galapagos are a melting pot of marine species. Ongoing seismic and volcanic activity reflects the processes that form this island. These processes, together with the extreme isolation of the island, lead to develop an unusual animal life. Does anyone live there? In the Galapagos? Yes. Uh, I want to add that 97% of all Galapagos are parks. And just a 3% you can, can is the percent of, um, of population there. And some of them are not habitable. Just this, I, I can remember Santa Cruz and San Cristobal are the two island that uh, can live person there. Okay. And um, so their, their research, I know that there's a lot of research done there. Do the research. Do the scientists live on the island and then return to the mainland, or do they go there every day? You know? I think more information about that can say Alejandra, because Alejandra made a research over there when she was a student, so she knows more about it. OK, about the, the research, they live, in, the most of them, in the Santa Cruz Island, but they uh, um, studies in different islands. The most famous is the world. I don't know if you can see in the in the west part. The wolf. Anybody live there? And this part is just for um, research, and that's it. But the people go there. You I, sometimes they make scuba diving, and then when they finish, they need to go to the. Uh, mm -hmm you know, their home. Yeah, okay. Unusual animal life. Next. In the Galapagos, there is a lack of natural predators. Thus, these creatures found this island have very little natural fear of people. The Galapagos National Park has established key rules of help to protect the animals in their habitats. 
visitor must remain a minimum safe distance of six feet from the wildlife all the time. Next. One of the most impressive characteristics of the Galapagos is the Galapagos Ecological Airport, which works 100% with renewable energy, solar and wind, and also is first in the world. Uh, and here we can see uh, some animals, like the green sea turtles. Next. Iguanas. Next, flamingo. Sea alliance. Red footy booby. <laughs> and stonefish, which is the most venomous fish in the world. The last curiosity that I have to add about this place is that 90% of all Galapagos Island is designed a national park and just the 3% is for the population. 97. Thank you everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. If you have more questions, please let me ask. And one more time, we can invite you to go to Equal. Bye. Bye. So tell me about the city that you are from in Ecuador. Uh, we are from Quevedo. And what the, what is, how big is that city? What is it like? No, actually it's small. I think that is four street. <laughs> four streets? So yeah. It, it's smaller than Stevens City? Uh, kind of a Stevens City. I think uh, I, yeah. Like Middletown maybe? No. No, I think it's no. similar to Stevens City. Okay. Oh, like... Mm -hmm. A little bit more small than Stephen City. Yeah. Okay. So, so a small city. In Quevedo, what? Quevedo is, is like Winchester. Is you know, similar contrast. And we 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 are from San Camilo. It's a small place. It's like a Stephen City. It's maybe a little more small. <laughs> small one, but kind of. Okay, and so how long, you've been in the United States, five years, Denise? Me? No, I have three years. Three Actually, years. Six okay. days ago, I had three years. Six, okay, three years and six days. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so when, when you were in school in Ecuador, did you, is, are your schools like our schools? Your high school? No, no, it is different. First, okay, I want to make, I want to say that are different type of schools, like private and public ones. And I am studying a private and Alejandro and Pablo in publics. So in my school, we had uniforms and here we, we don't have that, I mean, in the school that I see here, you can use whatever that you want to use, you want to wear. Even your pajamas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can get trouble if you go in pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that this is the first uh, difference about it. And also um, the buses, the buses here are free. I think that each public school has buses and there we have to pay is that uh, you have to contact someone who have a bus if you want to use this um, this kind of transportation you know okay when, when from Puerto Rico was talking about the education system she said that uh, the public school in Puerto Rico is they have free lunch free breakfast and something like that in Ecuador is different mm -hmm. the public schools i mean you don't pay anything for the classes but if when you are in the in the lunch time or you know break time if you can eat something you need to pay for that okay this is something like the buses you know but this is the, the big difference about 
public education. Okay, so in in Ecuador, when you were in school, did you go to one school? You know how that Gleb was talking about this, the students go to school in first grade and they stayed in the same school till 12th grade. Was that the way? Yeah, for me, was? for example, for me, I when I was in the school, it's like, is the joint that kindergarten and middle school and high school, I, I, okay, I will start in, in my school, kindergarten and middle school in just school, mm -hmm. you know? And then when I finish my high school, I move to another uh, school and then the university. But may, maybe uh, when I was in the high school, the, the educational system is a little different right now. For example, okay. Denise and I, we have difference when she received the diploma uh, for the schools, the high school. Mm -hmm. So in um, the when you're in the high school, do you prepare to go to college the way the British system is with the O levels and the A levels that prepare you for college? Or do you just go from high school to college like we do? Okay, Pablo and I, when we was in the high school, for example, I want to be engineer. So I, I take classes about that, you know, more math, physical, something like that for income. Uh, and Denise, uh, she, she got a science, right? Science diploma. It's and like general, 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 general. It goes like unificado, which means that I don't have to choose like a way. I already take all the classes and I can be whatever I want. What do you mean you can be whatever you want? I mean, for example, in the case of Alejandra, if she wants to be engineer, she has to take math and physics and this kind of subjects. But in my case, I took all the classes, chemistry, math, science, you know what I mean? I think so, okay, yeah, I do, I understand. So if Alejandra had taken just one math in high school and chemistry could she go on to college to become an engineer but i want a thing that i need to say that the education system is is, is changing now it's changing. different because for example when i finish my high school i and i want to go to, i graduate in sport and so i take i took a test for Getting. for adding uh, that uh, university, but the needs need, needs to take a general test and then go to the school. And for that, and for that university- I needs... took another test for enter that university. So oh, yeah. I remember that I took three, yeah. three, three tests, two are from the school and Another one from the university, like, you know, two of the high school. And, and so when you're in the university, can you change your mind? So if you wanted to be an engineer and then you said, no, I think I'll be a preacher. I mean, you can do it, but I think that could be, you know, could be your best option because sometimes you have to take some subjects, right? So for example, if I'm taking the, my general subjects, it's okay. Like, doesn't matter if you want to change. But if you are like more of the middle and you already see some subjects, when you want to change, some of them are not available for the thing that you want to change. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Probably you can lose lose your time. Like if I want to say like that, like lose- It'll take you more time to get your degree. Exactly. Okay, so, so if you're 30 years old and you want to go to college, can you go to college? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yes. So if you did, yeah. if you didn't um, take the right classes in high school, you can still go to college when you're 30. 
Yes, yes. It, yeah. it used to be okay. like before. It used to be um in the school uh, when I was younger. When I took classes in high school, there uh, after uh, because high school in Ecuador is six years, and you after you took the three first years, you needed to choose what which specialization you want to go. But for example, I choose chemistry, and that's supposed to be for medicals uh, or careers related with health professions. But I didn't want to do it, so I took I cho chose business, and I was still allowed to do it. And there, after I graduated, they changed it to no specializations. But now they are changing it back to having specializations again. Oh, okay, okay. So it is it's similar, just slightly different. Yeah, um, and we don't have like in high school in America they have like a junior, senior, and different they call yeah. every level like different names but in Ecuador we don't have that it's just like first you get six, a school. Six degrees. Well, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah you don't have you're not like a senior in high school no yeah you're not oh. so for us is like actually in my experience was pretty weird to say oh I'm the school and and people ask me what kind of school I say the school the normal where the child goes and they say, yeah, but the elementary or senior, and I say, oh, uh, what is the difference? Because for us, a school is everything. Mm -hmm. So when you're in college, are you a freshman, sophomore, senior? No. No, so when, you're, when people ask you now, are you a freshman or a senior? Do you understand what it means? Sorry. Yes. So so yes, when people ask you now, are you a freshman or a senior? Do you know what it means? Yeah, I mean, the freshman is when you are new, right? And the senior is when you have more time there, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. She because did just ask you what level are you on in, for example, my career psychology is six, eight semesters. And they just ask you what semester are you going through? Like I'm fifth and fifth semester, but there is no. Interesting. Inquiry. Interesting. So, so Alejandro, when you went to college in Ecuador, did you go to college every day? Yes. Well, in my university is mo from Monday to Friday because I, I am full-time a student. Okay. So, the thing I ha and for example, in my university is a public university and if I, for example, in one semester, I took six or seven subjects. So I, I am full all time. And, but I, I had a friend that they took three or four classes. So, you know. Okay. But for example, you can go to your diploma in four years or five years and other 10 years it it's a pen. Okay, now I'm gonna be mean to you. <laughs> How come you don't live by yourself, Alejandra? Sorry. How come you don't live by yourself? Okay. Um. When when I come here, um, honestly, I feel scared because. I got a diploma, so I, I have friends that they are working about oceanic or environmental science, and I'm studying English again. Oh, I mean, I go to the school again, and I can work about my, you know, my, my diploma. So that is the first frustration that I felt. And honestly, uh, this is a big process and challenge that I need to pass here but I'm happy right now because I if you were in Ecuador would you all live together I live with Pablo when because Pablo uh, started in uh, Guayaquil but in different university mm -hmm. so but Pablo is uh, two, but, year. two years two years but what I'm trying to say is that in our culture, 
it's very common for us to throw our children out when they're 18. So Go basically, to college. it wasn't an at home. Yeah. So your question is why she didn't live alone. Yeah, actually, she kind of was because we live in Quevedo, right? So yes. Pablo and Alejandro moved to Guayaquil to study. I moved there. They, they had their department when they started, you know? So basically, they were living for their own. But it's very common for you all to live together yeah. as a family and not move out. In fact, it would be it would be accepted if Pablo brought his wife to live mm -hmm. with you. Correct? Exactly. I mean, yeah, it could be. Yeah. And see, we wouldn't do that. <clears throat> um, it's that's a very different cultural thing for us. Yeah. It's um, true. I think that here when you are 18, your dream is to move. Yeah, but for us, I think that is... I think it was Isabel, Isabella was saying that in Brazil, it's very common for them to stay at home when they go to college. Mm -hmm. they, they don't and For go us too. Home. Yeah. And for us, it's Most very different. For it, it's, it's almost a given that young people move to another location. But we took that decision to move another city because uh, Quevedo has two... Some universities. universities. New universities in there. But... My career is no is in Guayaquil. It's just in my university, so I, that's why I choose to that's move. To move. Okay. Um, too many people have the opportunity to move to move to another city. For example, mm -hmm. it was was really complicated because my family want to. I they all the time saying, you know, Pablo, you need to go to Quito. Because Quito is the capital, is half the best university in 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 Ecuador, yeah. but was not my decision. No, mom, I need I want to go to Guayaquil because my friend work uh, work and study in, in in Guayaquil, but this is the reason I I finished my education in Guayaquil. After that, uh, my my sister Alejandra go behind me, and we finish the, the the university. Okay. Questions? Actually, uh, we want to say something else. Uh, we want to invite our friend who is chef in Ecuador. Time. Oh, Pablito, can you talk about Eric? Okay. Eric, please. Okay, now uh, we have the idea, so because for many time we are talking about our friends our ESL program that is wonderful because have the experience to learn about different culture, food, or, or you know, the everything. But my invitate, my, is my, one of my best friends is Eric Arriaga. He is a, a professional chef. He worked in, in Guayaquil. In National Geographic. He worked in important uh, uh, restaurant and hotel in Guayaquil, but right now he is working in, in a famous uh, company. It's a National Geographic. So, Eric Arriaga, can you tell, introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Eric Arriaga from Guayaquil. I'm degree in gastronomy and currently work as a head chef in National Geographic Tourists in Galapagos Island. So, so you are working in the Galapagos right now with National uh, uh, Right now I'm resting in my, in my home for COVID um, but work six weeks in the island and rest three weeks but, but now no the, 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 the como puedo los Los turistas, the tourists, don't, eh, no pueden, ¿cómo puedo decir? No pueden ingresar al país. I can uh, right now, the country. tourists cannot uh, go to the, to the country. Mm -hmm. No, to the Ecuador. Yeah. And so what do you do with the National Geographic? Uh, I'm a head chef. You're the head chef for the National yeah. Geographic team that mm -hmm. is working at um, the Galapagos Islands. Yes. Yeah. And so what are you making them to eat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, and everything. Uh, salad, bread, dessert, soup. The Ecuadorian gastronomy is very tasty. We had an immense variety of dishes. And we have a question for Eric. Uh, what do you think would be the Ecuadorian food that every tourist should eat and why? Encebollado. The encebollado is the most representative dish of my country. It's a soap or albacore fish with cassava eh, and the, ¿cómo puedo decir? ¿Lo pueden acompañar? Uh, you can eat with, with you can eat with uh, a yeah. lot of topping. Albacore is tuna, right? Exactly. Yeah, so, it's yeah. a variety. Yeah, it's a, a variety of tuna. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you going to send us the recipe so we can try to make it? Yes. Yeah, yes. when you go to Ecuador with me, <laughs> we, eat, we cook for us too. Okay. You have to try your food, I told you. Oh, you know I will. <laughs> the opportunity to eat the, the food of Eric is really delicious. To be honest with you, it's really delicious. delicious. Great. Okay. Eric, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Eric, oh, oh, say, tell us our your experience. Thank you very much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Yes, you'll have to let us know when the magazine comes out with the um, expose on the Galapagos Islands because we will buy it and say, we know the, the man who cooked for these photographers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I am sure that. Here is... oh, we have another friend here. Uh, he is Fabian, Fabian Mendoza. So he's teacher in my country, <laughs> English teacher. So he's my age. So uh, Fabian, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, well, yeah. Hello, um, my name is Fabian Mendoza. I've been a teacher for around four years now, since I was like 15. And mm -hmm. uh, I've been working teaching, well, EFL for that, uh, yeah, EFL from, from that mm -hmm. time and on. I'm from Quevedo, though, right now I'm living in Guayaquil. And so, what, are, grade do you, what grade do you teach? What age? Um, well, I teach in a school, and in the school, I teach six basic. Would be which would be uh, kids from around 11, like 10, 11 years old. Uh, but also I teach in an academy. Well, it's actually a binational center uh, from, uh, it's called the Centro Ecuatoriano Norteamericano, right? So I teach there and there I teach all ages, actually. And so it's the academy, is that a school that the students have to pay yeah. for? Yeah, the, uh, the academy does have a, a lot of aids for people with less resources and it does uh, have scholarships, like half a scholarship or a whole scholarship according to uh, the needs of the student. Though right now it has a, the amount of students with scholarships has gotten a lot lower because of the, well, the situation that we're going through. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many students do you have in a classroom? Well, in the school I, in the school I work with right now, I have 20. And in like, in the academy, I do have around, from, well, I've had classes with five students, though usually it's around 12. Okay. And though not, not all schools are like that. And if you think about it, for example, uh, cheaper schools or, or or even public schools have a really high amount of students in one classroom. Uh, would you imagine having like being at teaching teaching 10 year olds or seven year olds and having 35 students in a class? <laughs> That's the kind of situation like uh, you go through in like smaller schools that has le that have less uh, classrooms. Is there a regulation in Ecuador for the number of students in a classroom? We wish. Oh. 
Uh, well, there is there is public schools where they have like 40 or even sometimes more students in one classroom. Wow. Yeah, because there there is a big amount of students and like, well, in, and there are a lot of schools too, like public schools, but you know, it's complicated. Yeah. They don't have as many like renovations and we don't really get, uh, well, I don't mean support, more, what do I mean? Uh, government aid. Government aid. All right. Go, yeah, funding for, for schools. Like actually during the pandemic, uh, schools and university have uh, lost a lot of the funding that they have. Would you imagine many universities uh, lost, well, not lost, fired a lot of teachers, a lot of university teachers, friends of mine, um, because they didn't have money to pay them anymore. Yeah. You know, so it's, it has been very complicated. I do think that while well, I was hearing uh, uh, my friends speak, so I do think that Ecuador is a great place. It has like a lot of nature and uh, things that you can enjoy, but it leaves much more to desire when we talk about uh, the organization of the country, like the development that uh, the government should give us, right? Uh, that's why um, it can get very complicated. Do all of your classrooms have computers in them? Not all, well, we do have classrooms with computers. Actually, the school I'm working at right now is a private school and it's a uh, kind of expensive, so it's very well equipped, though I have been working there for a, about a year. Uh, and well, I, I, well, it's a year, so a year since COVID started, I never got to meet like the whole school, like, <laughs> but in the, the other school I've worked at, for example, this, I, I started with, uh, with Denise, mm -hmm. right? We started in the same school. And that school actually didn't have as many uh, computers. It has, it had like two classrooms with computers and they were like 25 computers and we were like 30, 35 students per class. So it was kind of complicated. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it was a private school. I mean, like from the, from the city we were living at, it was one of the most expensive schools in the city. So, yeah. yeah. The problem is the public ones. The public ones, um, they don't have the similar. Yeah, yeah. Sad, uh, there, there have been governments that have uh, supported public, school, public schools a bit more, though uh, they, our governments here in Ecuador like have this kind of shadiness, you know what I mean? Uh, for I can't example, believe that of all governments though, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but I the am biggest, government. <laughs> The thing, no, is that, the thing is I that I am your elected official. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> the thing is that Ecuador has had like a very bad story with the governments that we have had. For example, uh, if you think about, uh, well, this, like, this last government that we had during the whole pandemic situation, we have like how many? Five, seven governments of like corruption of people <laughs> stealing. Like there was this President Abdullah Bukaran, when was he a president? In <laughs> what year? I don't know. Around 2004 or 2005, okay? So he was a president a long time ago. So this guy is like super rich. He has a lot of money. The funny thing is that he owns a, <laughs> a burger, a burger, uh, a burger stand. Like he, he doesn't have a restaurant, he has a burger stand, you know? <laughs> and, and, and he's a, a millionaire. Like they discovered in his house, like a, a bunch of a bunch of uh, COVID tests and a gun. Here in Ecuador, we we have no, we we don't allow guns, right? <laughs> we don't have a gun policy. So a, a, and he went. I think he he's not in prison, but he is a uh, sentence and also a lot of his family. So it's very complicated. That's one of the presidents we have had. Like this situation is very common, I'm telling you. So are your schools closed right now? Are, this, are the children in the classroom or are they at home learning? No Online children, right now. Uh, yeah, no, children's, no children are, uh, are uh, going to be <coughs> normally. 
though there are plans to start uh, classes again, like normally, soon. We don't know how true that can be because there is a bit of a complication with the vaccines, same situation. Uh, a lot of government people have been vaccinated, though uh, normal people, civilians haven't. You know, so that's a situation. We teachers are in the list, uh, in the list as uh, like along fire, uh, firefighters, policemen, uh, and elders. We are among those people that have to be vaccinated first. So we're going to start normal classes, but you know. <laughs> but you haven't been vaccinated yet. We haven't been vaccinated. We are supposed <laughs> to start with that situation like how long ago? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a week ago, we, we should have started with vaccinations, and, and, and a week ago, we should have started, you know, and e everything was down. Now, the, the servers from the, uh, from the place where you have to register was down. You shouldn't even need to register. I mean, they have a list of everyone in the ES, and the ES is a, a service that Ecuador has for uh, medical, medical support for people and many other situations like that. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Well, my grandparents have the, the first vaccine. What? My grandparents already have the first vaccine. Really? That's awesome. My None of my grandparents have, have gotten any. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, actually, they are waiting for the second doses that will be in April 12th. Yeah. Wow. Don't Some... ask me how. Or what? That's, that's actually something that worries me. I know that <clears throat> at some point we are going to we're going to get the vaccine. What I'm not sure is that if it, is if we are going to get the second shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get the vaccine, but I don't know. I don't, I can't trust them with that second shot. And if we don't get the second shot, is for not right? Yeah, unless mm -hmm. you get the Johnson and Johnson. Okay. But we don't we have Pfizer. Yeah, you only have Pfizer. That's right. So you're going to have to have two. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty <clears> much. For the children in learning English, do you use like television, music, that type of thing, or do you use strictly by the book? Actually, he's singer too. So he I do not sing so sings to teach. Yes. Yeah, but I do not sing. I make them sing. Oh, good. Good. I try to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, actually, it, it also depends on the, on the school. Uh, many smaller schools or uh, poorer schools, uh, for, not a, for, a, for, a, for, for a lack of a better word, uh, they have like recorders, old recorders, where we have CDs, and that's what we use to teach. All right? But uh, private schools, what, uh, schools that have more... Uh, more money, usually have like TVs and everything like that you would need in a normal classroom. Okay. Though, as I say, it's not, a, it's not the rule because most schools are public and uh, even the private schools in a smaller towns, because for example, Guayaquil is a city, right? Quevedo is a small city. We could say a mm -hmm. big town, right? And uh, so it doesn't have that kind of uh, I would I would even say advancements yeah. in education. Okay, um, Alejandra, uh, his question. Okay, for you we have the. Um, what is your favorite place in Ecuador? My favorite place in Ecuador. I like. Well, I haven't. I, I actually haven't traveled too much, but from the places I've gone, I like. I really like Quito. I'm not one to be much in contact with nature, but Quito has a lot of uh, museums and buildings that are very nice to visit, including like churches. Like the, the architecture of churches in Quito is amazing. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you for your time. And we really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, right. and next. Bye. 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 Nice to meet and you. And next Thanks person, Pedro. <clears throat> <clears throat> hey, Tio, are you there? <laughs> I'm not sure he, 
Can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, we have another student from Ecuador, uh -huh. Felix Rosales. Felix is a student from uh, SPOL, is the same university that I am student. So, uh, well, tell us about you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Felix Rosales. I study electronic engineering in the same college as Alejandra. Um, well, um, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> so tell us about your classes. What were they like? What do you uh, do well, now at the job? Right now, with the pandemic, you know, all online classes. We have, uh, in normal classes, we will have uh, laboratories. They are very well equipped. Um, and mm, the orientation and, or the jobs that I could work at, for example, right now, I am in a program with a company called uh, Dialec, which is a company who uh, do jobs about automation, automation processes in industries. For example, if, I don't know, in the food industry, if you want to set a, a process to do some bread industrially, you will have to program some equipment to um, work with motors, uh, controllers, um, and all this equipment. So we will work there to have all the plant uh, very well equipped all uh, with the signals and all the equipment uh, done. Yeah, it's kind of like a commercial engineer. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And we have a question for you and is the, why do you think Ecuador should be a destination for tourists and why? Why do I think, well, the reason, well, it's very hard to choose a, a specific reason, but if I would have to, I'll say uh, Ecuador has a variety of places and climates that people from all over the world uh, can choose. For example, uh, Miss Lisa Curry uh, said that uh, she likes volcano, right? So you, have, you will have the purple region to visit and you will enjoy to visit all the mountains, the national parks, the volcanoes there. But if you're more into sea or, or I don't know, uh, you will like to visit Galapagos Islands, maybe. Maybe you, if you're more into vegetation or getting to know the, the indigenous cultures, you should definitely, definitely visit the jungle or the Amazon uh, region. That is a very uh, wonderful place to visit. I was, uh, I traveled two times there and get to know two different indigenous culture and it's amazing there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Felix. So, no Felix, if you wanted to tell us one thing that you would want to eat in Ecuador, that's your favorite thing to eat, what would it be? Well, in the Andes region, where well, the climate is cold, at the mountains, there is one dish that is called fritada. That is one of my favorite uh, plates there. It is a pork meat fried. Well, is is uh, I don't know the process, but it's, I think it's fried. Uh, sometimes <laughs> it is uh, it's it comes with um, corn, but maybe Salad. Sandra, yes, and Pablo can help me with, with that. But that's my favorite dish here. Mashed potatoes. Okay. And so if you delicious. only got to go to one place in Ecuador, you were only going to be there for two days, okay. where would it be? My favorite place in here is um, the Kilotoa Volcano. <gasps> oh, good. I'm so coming with Kilotoa you. Volcano <laughs> is a dead volcano, which has a lagoon inside of the volcano. So you can go into the lagoon. And now the, there is a lot of, well, there is more uh, stores like 
tourism places inside the lagoon itself where you can visit and take some wonderful pictures. It, it will be amazing, yeah. Lisa, remember the, pic, the, the story when I told you that I almost died because my pressure? Yes. That place is the <laughs> Kilotoa. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. I felt the same way when I felt the same way when I traveled there. It's very (laughs) high. Uh, the The volcano is very high. So the air is very thin. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Almost died. You have to take. So where uh, is that in in the scope of Ecuador? Where it where exactly is that location? Sumbawa. North, south, east. Where? It's in the. I don't know if you remember the poop purple. Um, uh-huh. Is there? Uh, is I think, I think I think from the middle is a little bit like down. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's really close our home house. It's like one hour and a half, kind of that. Okay, good. So oh, when I come to see, we can go there. Yeah, when you go with me. <laughs> Another important thing that I don't know if you remember that you asked us about Quevedo, is the hometown. This is an important place in Ecuador because Quevedo is the connection to the coast and the Sierra regions. So important. So you you need to pass for Quevedo when you you can go to both. Yeah. Okay. So, Felix, I'm going to ask you one more question. <laughs> one place that you would like to see in the United States, where would it be? Oof, the... Where I live, yeah. where I live. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to say, um, the, el, ¿cómo es? El Colorado, el... Oh, the Grand Canyon. El the, Grand, Canyon. Oh, the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. I, I've seen the, the pictures and I love to visit there. Yes, it does take your breath away. Actually, I want to add that he came here to work in a um, work study program. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, he went to Florida, but for the COVID, he didn't have time to visit because yes. he planned to, he, even he planned to come here with my Esther. Esther remember Esther? Mm-hmm. Yes with the global awareness uh, the last year. Yeah, but because the COVID, he never had the opportunity to travel in, around the United States. Yes. Even though I didn't have the chance to travel so much, I have the chance to go to the Niagara Falls. It was also amazing. Yes, mm-hmm. it does. It takes your breath away. Yes. It is fantastic. Yes. Yes, I know when we took my son to the Grand Canyon, that was the first thing that he said. You always see the pictures and you think, wow, it's really cool. But when you're standing there, you think, wow, this is really cool. (laughs) (laughs) So, yes. Thank you for being with us, Felix. Thank you. Thank you, Felix. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. So I don't know if we we have more time. You have about have... 15 more minutes. Okay, so perfect. I can see here a Jover Mero. Hello, hello. Are you there? Yeah, it, I'm here. No, he's my friend. He's he started with me. He's a little bit nervous. He knows English, but sometimes we be have a problem. But I'm more than sure that he will do it great. So, hey, Jover, how are you? Hello, everybody is seeing me or what? <laughs> no, it's okay. You have a new look. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. So I don't I don't understand much English because right now uh, I'm nervous and <laughs> okay. no, you you're fine. Uh, Just right ask now the question, I try to, to learn. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. I have a question for you. What okay. do you think? Oh, no. That's it. If you had a choose one word to describe Ecuador, what would it be and why? Melissa, please. Tienes que coger, <laughs> si tienes que coger una palabra para definir Ecuador, ¿cuál sería? Okay. Oh. ¿Cómo se dice diverso? Diverse. 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 Oh, nice. Diverse. So diverse. 
because the I don't know the word is so different in the three regions. So mm -hmm. you can change you can change uh, what you what you like. You like the cost is so hot. Mm -hmm. Está muy cerca la costa si quieres ir a la costa. Oh, so, okay. So if you want to, to be on the coast, coast, you can be on the coast. Uh -huh. Okay. So you got it, Lisa. You're learning. You're oh, ready to go. From. <laughs> so more questions? That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> If we have the last question, oh, I, I don't know if you have question for, for him, Lisa, or anybody, I don't know. Okay, I have the last person, she's Doris Araujo. Hmm. She's living in the United States. She's a Ecuadorian woman, and she is a free ESL classes at Learn Fairfax student. So she's learning English. So, cool. <laughs> Hi. Hello. So, I don't know if you can tell us about you. <laughs> He's a little nervous, but huh? it's okay. my English is not perfect. A little bit English. <laughs> my name is Dorixi Araujo. I, my country is Ecuador. Uh, my city is Valencia. Okay. <laughs> Dorixis, uh, why are you living in the United States and how long do you live here? I live in, you say, is uh, four years. Four years? Four years old. No, four years. Four, four years. Mm -hmm. um, in what? Why are you living here? Uh, for new opportunity. We are glad that you are here. It's <laughs> wonderful that you have joined us for this event. I am glad that they ask you to join us. Okay, and the last question is, what do uh, you- Wait, I'm not- Wait. <laughs> <laughs> She's not finished. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, I am glad that you are taking the community classes. Do you have Maddie as a teacher? As Justin? Who is your instructor? Her professor is Justin. Justin. Oh, okay, good. I am glad that you have Justin. And I hope to see you at Lord Fairfax on the other side soon. And Lord is Maria. Okay. Good. Maybe the next global awareness you can invite, enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Now I have someone to help me invite them. <laughs> I don't know. It's a girl. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going to give her a job. <laughs> I really appreciate that she is with me, uh, with us. So, and I have the last question. And what do you miss most mm. about Ecuador? And my daughter, mm. my, my, my family, my food, everything in Ecuador. Yes. Are you related? Kind of that. Yes. <laughs> Feel like a family. Okay, good. Everybody needs family. So yeah. yeah. And we just families. Yes. <laughs> remember you for the next Global Awareness Day. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so that you can participate next time. <laughs> Ecuadorian food, delicious. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Then we must be on campus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It should be a good idea. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank Bye. you. Keep up the good work. Actually, Alejandra, if you have another question, I have another friend here. Okay, um, let's can place a, a question about volcanoes. I don't know if you remember, Lisa, your questions about what is 
the, the last, eruption last one eruption of the Cotopaxi? 2015, that's not a dead volcano. Yeah. What's that's a live volcano. I want to yeah, go Yeah, uh, the difference is that it doesn't include lava. It has a small eruptions, but it's not lava, like, you know. Well, there's lava down in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I want to go in there and see it. <laughs> I know, you have to go. <laughs> no, <laughs> right to the volcano. <laughs> I can go to the volcano. <laughs> okay, we have time for one more. Uh, Miluska, are you there? I think I saw her, yes. Yeah. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Hi. Yeah, she's another friend of me. So first I want to say thank you for being here. I know that I didn't give you enough time to let you know about the global awareness. So thank you so much. And my sister will make a question for you, okay? Okay. Um, what do you think should be changed in Ecuador and why? What do I think what? ¿Qué cosa crees que deberíamos cambiar en Ecuador y por qué? I think that, okay, maybe we should change the way we act, you know, people. Maybe a little bit more of kindness because this is a really, um, I would say, it's a little bit dangerous and it's all, there is a lot of bad people and they are like always, you know, I wish that maybe there is more kindness or maybe that people will be a little bit more polite. Mm -hmm. I think that's a global desire. <laughs> yeah, Not yeah. Just for Ecuador. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's Actually, I want to ask something about Miluska. Miluska works in a kind of organization which save animals, kitties and dogs around around our country. I mean, not our country, our hometown, Quevedo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's called Fundación Defensa Animal. Yeah, Fundación Defensa Animal. It's a mm -hmm. organization which try to help um, dogs that are on the street and they make activities to recollect money and pay their uh, surgeries or needs that the dogs need. Yeah, that's true. Great. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little shy. <laughs> I have another question. What do you think yeah. is the biggest cultural difference between Ecuador and US and the US? Okay, let me think first. Mm. May I will say that maybe our people is like we have a lot of parties and holidays, and I think maybe that's one of the biggest uh, differences <laughs> that we can say because we are always like having parties and traveling to to different places and always trying to to enjoy every place and you know you're an Ecuadorian too so you know what I mean mm -hmm. but yeah maybe it's that it actually yeah I think that is a good answer but I want to add that sometimes we are more familiar so we like to enjoy and travel with our family and our friends. So I think that this is a big difference between here because when you go to a place here, usually you go for your own or just with you two or friends. But in Ecuador, if you go to the, for example, to the river, you go like a bunch of people, 10 or 21. Yeah. And the whole family, cars. The, it, has, it has to be the whole family. Yeah. Yes, and that is a very, that is a cultural thing, the family, mm -hmm. yes. The big reason, the big difference yeah. in this country. Because yes, it is. Yes, and, and that is something you should treasure and keep hold of. 
I that's miss not something you want to change. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Miluska, for being here. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Yes, thank You're you. Welcome. Bye bye. And may Have we all be kinder to each other. <laughs> yeah, because Lisa will go to Echo with me. <laughs> we will we'll be out. waiting for you, Lisa. Goodbye. Bye. Um, somebody asked a question I didn't hear. Bro Providence was talking. Yeah, when's this trip coming up? As soon oh, when the trip coming up, probably <laughs> when the COVID end, when all people had the vaccine, we have to go to Ecuador. Everybody, I invite everybody. <laughs> okay. We have to sell cookies or everything. We have to do it to go over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll even bake cookies and sell them just so I have enough money to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, people would probably pay me not to bake the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do want to say one thing very quickly. Um, you know, Denise started as an ESL student, and Denise is also on the president's list for her accomplishments last semester in 2020. <laughs> and these three have all been suffering for co from COVID for the last week. So they, even through the COVID, they have come on to do this. So I really do appreciate it, kids. And you probably need to go and sleep. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting your friends. I think that was great. What a wonderful.